Not yet. Uh, okay, so uh, I pressed the live button a little earlier. Uh, we're just waiting for our, our colleagues to come on. So I'm going to do a 10-second count lockdown, and I'm sure they're going to be here in that time. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There she is! Oh, wouldn't it be great if she, like, appeared there? <laughs> it worked last time with Sam, but uh, yeah. Okay. I sent them the link in Facebook now, so. Oh, there she is. Ah. All right. And the other one will be there in five, four, three, two, Ooh. one. Oh, <laughs> come on, come on. You can Carl, I'm breaking people's ears. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Waiting for Val. For her to join our show. There. There she is. Hi. Hey. Okay, so we're live. Hi. Watch your language. I know we are a lot of people who swear here, so just we're live on the air. Uh, we're gonna start our show. You guys are ready? Ready. Yeah. Okay, you know the drill, right? Yes. yes. Do we know the drill, though. I mean, yes, we know the drill. Go, okay, go, 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 go. You're watching the Appreciationist. My name is Peter Hartman. I am Valerie Soule. I'm Baby Wong. And I'm Samantha Barley. Woo! And there we are. We're going to have a fun time tonight talking about the engine of creation. I'm going to say hello to our good friend, Luke, who's becoming a fast regular for the show. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, he's even got music. Oh, yeah. Got band. Oh, got any on his guitar. What do I got? Woo. I got what my hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do a nice triangle. Ding, ding. Um, yeah. excellent. Well, thank you guys for watching the show tonight. Uh, we're a little late, but um, we're full of fun. Tonight we're talking about the engine of creation, and uh, we're going to be having fun talking about uh, what's that all about. Um, actually, I don't even know if you know what that's about. Uh, I have all kinds of information in my head. Hey, when I say... Sam. <laughs> 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 Good one. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I did not at all mean to put the hat on. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, look, I think you're demonstrating the engine of creation right here, which it, which is variation. But more on that later. Before we jump to that, I want to let you know what I learned this week. Uh, in our first segment, what I learned this week, I tell you what I learned this week. Um, I so I was watching a, a TV show called. Um, Sense8, okay? Sense8 is a TV show. You can see it on, well, I shouldn't say TV show. It's on Netflix. Um, it's about eight people who are connect, who are con uh, connected uh, through their senses. So these eight people, they live in a sort of collective, and they can feel each other's feelings. They can see through each other's eyes, blah, blah, blah. It's a very uh, fantasy sci-fi show. Um, what I found interesting interesting is that somebody in there was trying to explain, uh, and they used a term called limbic resonance. And I was like, hmm, that sounds interesting. I wonder if that's actually a real thing. Now, uh, limbic resonance is a real thing. Of course, it doesn't uh, connect people in, uh, in, in collectives that allow people to see through people's eyes. That's, of course, a perversion of it. But limbic resonance is um, something that happens in human beings. It's actually a theory that um, generates empathy and that allows us to, to connect to, uh, to our friends and family and to society as a whole. Um, and it's very important for mammals to have this in order to enhance their social uh, connections. Um, so there's this theory that says that biologically that we connect to those around us and feel for them like we feel for ourselves. And I thought, oh, that's actually pretty interesting. We, it's kind of like a, a mini superpower where we sort of connect to one another. So if you want to look up limbic resonance, you can find that on Wikipedia. It's super simple. Um, I was going to read the Wikipedia entry, but I would like you to do it for yourself. Uh, just know that you are designed uh, to connect to other people, and um, those connections can um, 
transcend verbal communication. So I thought that was actually pretty interesting. Um, uh, actually, now that I think about it, there are some people I'm probably connected to that I might not want to be connected to. Um, maybe that's why I always feel itchy. Is that a is that a thing? No, it's not a thing. Um, okay, so um, my producer is telling me not to move my hands, which uh, anybody who knows me knows it's very difficult. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we'll get through it. Limbic resonance. That's what I'm saying. Explain what that means. They don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> Oh well, I'm sorry. I move my hands on camera, and uh, and it slows down the video. So uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta watch that. So if you see me sort of saying stiff like this, it's because I'm trying my best. Uh, but in about 30 seconds, I'll be waving my hand again, and I'll get another message. So there we have it. Look, um, the most important segment during the show is called a moment of appreciation, and that's where we share uh, something that we appreciated in the last seven days. It could be something good that happened that's easy to appreciate, or it could be something that wasn't so great. Something that maybe wasn't so great is that it rained um, tons, but, uh, you know, it was fun to be around Sam because she kept saying how, oh, the plants are going to grow and the grass is going to go water, you know, when you're when you green thumb. Uh, they don't mind the rain. Um, they also don't mind the smell of poo, but whatever. That's a separate thing. It's fertilizer. That's that's a completely separate uh, conversation. Um, but a moment of appreciation can be something good that happened or not so great, but we can see the value in today. Anybody that would like to share a moment of appreciation? It's not obligated, but it is mandatory. So. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Oh, okay. I was gonna. It was gonna be a staring contest. I swear. I would have just let that go for, for five minutes. <laughs> Maybe you're up. Um, I'm pretty happy with my uh, current temporary work I'm doing at uh, this big company. They're really big. They have like uh, thousands of people. It's the first time I work for a big company. They are very different. It's a different experience, and I appreciate this opportunity. I've I've done the same thing, but for a smaller company. Now I have this experience with bigger company. It looks good on my CV. And also, I learned that well. You know, it's no big deal. Being a big company it means they have a more volume of transaction, and they're more delayed than anybody else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, look, you got some benefits there. Um, uh, just so you know, um, well, I don't know if I should say this, but uh, so I heard everything that you said, but you sounded kind of like a robot. Did the company transform you, or, or, or is everything a? I just I heard a double voice. Does it sound okay for you? Uh, the sound? You mean like if I can hear you okay? Yeah, like does everything sound cool for you? She won't hear herself very well, I don't think. Oh, I see. Um, so just so you know, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe maybe we can unplug the mic and plug it back in. in I don't interesting. And uh, it actually sounds very cool the way you sound right now. Like, like Okay, can you hear me? Well, I can hear you, but uh, it's probably just a connection issue. But what you said came through loud and clear and uh, very cool, very sci-fi-like. Uh, I'm really glad that you're enjoying your work. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really cool, the temporary work. And, and so you said it's, last time you talked about this, you said it was close to you, right? So you don't have to, like, journey. Yeah, it's really close, like a 15, 20 minutes drive. Nice. Very, very cool. Well, that's a great moment of appreciation. Anything else you want to add to that? Well, I can How go uh, Luke will go. I'll, t I'll come to you in just one second. Uh, Baby, I just want to pick on you for a second more. How are your tomatoes doing? Did you eat them yet? Well, I have two types. Uh, the small, small one that they are ripe, and I was sharing with my coworkers. And uh, the big one, they're supposed to be like, not that big, probably this big. But those ones are still very green, so I'm still waiting. And I know, like, it's almost a September. Our summer is probably over soon, so I'm really hoping that it can grow fast. So I'm really happy about the rain. I think the more the rain, the, the faster they grow. Excellent. Very, very cool. Well, look, as long Anytime we can appreciate the rain, I think that's a really, really cool thing. Thank you so much for sharing that moment of appreciation. Really, really cool. Luke, you're up next. Okay, uh, my moment of appreciation is uh, last week I went with my mother. They organized a little uh, trip on the water there, uh, a boat trip on, on the St. Lawrence River in Lachine there. So I went with her and I, and I figured also uh, as a, a volunteer you know, to help the, the other person that were there because we have to put the, the, the wheelchairs you know, to, to the places and everything. So uh, it was a lot of fun. and. Uh, very fun, yeah. 
That's really cool. Awesome. I didn't even know there was like boat trips there on the on that river. That's really cool. And you had mentioned something at the end of last show. I think we were off the air. It was something really cool about the type of kisses you used to give to nurses. <laughs> oh yeah, when I was at the hospital, when I was in dialysis, I, I often I, I brought a, a bag of kisses, Hershey's kisses, and I, I would uh, give some to them. And sometimes I would uh, I wouldn't show the the, the, the chocolate, the kisses. I would ask the nurse, that, "Do you want a kiss?" And she would turn around and look at me. And then I would show the kisses, and they would start all laughing and. <laughs> That's cool. I really like that. I remember that all week since you told me, so that's really, really awesome. Yeah. Uh, really, really cool. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Val. Uh, yep. You're welcome. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. Um, yeah, so my moment of appreciation what happened on Monday night. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, it was just a moment of peace and quiet that I really didn't expect. I went to the pharmacy because I needed some stuff, and Sherbrooke, it's on Sherbrooke Street. I'm in the east end of Montreal, and Sherbrooke Street is rarely quiet. I mean, it, there's usually traffic all the time, even at night, and it was around 7 p.m. at night, and there was a bit of traffic, but it was so peaceful and quiet compared to usual, and there was nobody in the parking lot, almost no cars. I felt like this sense of peace, like the whole world belonged to me, and I, I could just breathe and, and enjoy this uh, this quiet in a in a in a place where I really didn't expect it. So and it was a nice night. It was it was really nice. So that was that's it. Simple but very profound actually. So I, I took it all in. It was really beautiful. Oh that's excellent. Yeah. Finding those appreciation moments wherever they happen, being in the moment enough to to recognize them when they do. Very, very cool. Um I like that. It reminds me of uh, during the ice storm when um, back in the day I walked down the street on a busy street and it was just all quiet and I thought, ooh, this is kind of really nice. Really cool. Thank you for sharing that moment with us, Val. Uh, Hello. I just want to see if there's an echo. When I was talking before, there was an echo. No, that's fine. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so my moment of appreciation is, well, so a couple of years ago I got my bike stolen. I had a wonderful, beautiful silver Norco bike got stolen off my balcony. Um, Peter will remember that was like torture for me. I was putting pictures like all over the internet trying to find it. Anyway, I never got that bike. However, um, I think it was last week my... Um, a friend of mine at the gardens where I'm, uh, you know, learning to garden, she got a new bike. And just like, uh, just like that, I, I didn't even remember seeing her bike. I was like, hey, maybe she'll sell her old one to me. I was thinking it like was a piece of crap. I didn't even really realize. And uh, she was like, yeah, I, well, I definitely want to sell it to you. And so she sent me a picture, and it's a silver Norco bike. <laughs> not my bike, not exactly the same, um, but but still like a really good quality bike. She stole I, your bike. What? No, I was just joking. I was just saying she stole your bike. And you now can't she's move your hands. You. Now you're just frozen. Yeah, she stole my bike. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have this beautiful uh, Norco bike. Uh, two years later, I got myself a bike. In between all that time, I was like rollerblading and walking, and I was like looking and searching to see if I would get a bike. Finally, I have one, and so even this week, an, a part of my moment of appreciation is I planned an appreciation uh, walk slash bike ride. Um, so a couple of my members in Self Discovery Montreal came and we went for a bike ride along the waterfront. Um, we were seeing the sunset, we saw the rapids, and just like, it's so much easier to go places with a bike. <laughs> and it was just, it was lovely. So I'm very, very happy about it. Yay. That's really cool. Yeah, and I'm, I'm back on having a food run missions to go get you some food while, while I'm on this bike here. Uh, so now that it's convenient again. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Very nice. Look, thank you so much for sharing our own appreciation. I didn't. I actually didn't know you did a bike ride uh, walk. Uh, I know you had done it before with the Pixie bikes, so I'm glad you were able to do it again. Yeah, and I forgot to post it in Law of Attraction Montreal. So <laughs> there were there were three of us. It was it was intimate, and nice. But I posted it like the day before, so that also didn't help. But I I was like I got my new bike. Yeah. I'm like I want to get out, and so yeah. That's good. That's a that's a good word that we use, you know. And a lot, not a lot of people show up. We say it was intimate. It was, 
it was an intimate session. It was really <laughs> nice. My moment of appreciation. Uh, well, we had an intimate session. Um, we we started out. Uh, we started doing our um, biweekly. Um, bi-monthly or monthly dinners. So we ca I call it kin. Kin means um, uh, sort of family. It's in the family of a kinship kin. Um, and so we went to dinner. We went to a Mexican restaurant. The restaurant wasn't so great. It was really fun to be around uh, people. So we were, I don't know, about eight Eight or, eight or nine people, and it was a really fun time. We got to learn about other people, um, uh, talk a lot, um, and even the fact that the food wasn't so great, it still didn't ruin our experience, and I look forward to the next one that we're going to be doing. Uh, the next one should be August 27th, um, and that will likely be on a terrace at a Greek restaurant, and then the one after that will be on the weekend for sushi, uh, so keep you guys keep your eyes open for that. But we had a really fun time doing Kin, but my real moment of appreciation, um, I don't know how to explain this, uh, we, I went to see the newest Born Identity movie with my brother at the movie theater, but, and uh, the whole family went, and uh, so the girls went to see Ghostbusters, and the boys went to see born identity and we had to take our uh, my brother's son came he's he just turned two and so we took him to the theater uh, he sits down in our laps he's just eating popcorn and he's quiet and a lovely guy the whole time during the movie but what made it great was right at the most crucial point in the movie right where everything comes to a head right when the good guy is taking out the bad guy. You hear the snap of their neck, and all of a sudden, Baron, the little kid, yells out, Peter, and points at the screen, because he, he wants to share in the moment. He wants you to make sure that you're seeing the same thing he's doing. And so in the deathly silence of this movie theater, I just hear this little kid scream my name, Peter, look! And uh, man, I was embarrassed and just laughing at the same time. It was like the best moment ever. I had to spend the next few minutes just stifling my laugh uh, because of the silence that happened in the room. Uh, so that was fun. That was a lot of fun to spend some time with the little guy um, uh, with, his, with his uncle and his daddy. Well, that's my moment of appreciation, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, thank you, everybody for sharing that. If you have a moment of appreciation you want to send that in, please send us a message or anywhere that you can find us. You can go to theappreciations.com, check out our Facebook page, anything you like, and we'll even read your moment of appreciation on air if you like. Um, so that's it for that. Uh, the next segment is What a Great Idea, and that's where I point you towards a product, a service, an idea that is deserving of your attention because whatever we give our attention to becomes Everybody's on mute. A greater part of our experience. I know you said it in your brains. I could tell. I could hear it with that limbic resonance. I could sense you saying it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, so I'll say two. Uh, the first one is called uh, canva.com, which is a website that allows you to design uh, images. So if you're not um, a designer, if you don't have the tools to do that, you can use a free service online called canva.com in order to compose your images, uh, even, give, even gives you access to the images. And if you don't, uh, if we've already said Canva.com, you can use an app called Adobe Comp, C-O-M-P. Adobe Comp, it's this free app that allows you to do designs on your use a keyboard and a mouse. Very simple way. I love uh, uh, tools that allow people to take advantage of technology, especially if they don't have expertise. So that's Canva.com and Adobe Comp. You can find it on the App Store. Today's topic is the engine of creation. Now, I'm, I'm just going to tell you this, okay? The engine of creation is variation okay another way to say variation is to say novelty or complexity if I say that the engine of creation is variation does that mean anything to you if so what does it mean to you uh, another way that I say it is that the mantra of the universe is more 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 okay so what does that say to you uh, when, when I think of human beings I think of human beings as being designed to create new things, to create variations on old things. You, you know what I mean? So when you hear that uh, the engine of creation is variation, does, what, the, what do you think that means to you? What, 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 does, what, what does it bring to mind? So for me, so for me it brings, you're frozen, it's so weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, for me it, it means um, new experiences, trying new things. So I call myself a self-discovery life coach because I feel like the more things that we do, the more things that we try, the more um, we're exposed to, the more we learn about ourselves, the more we learn what we like, what we don't like, what we want, what we don't want. Um, so when I hear that, I hear like experiences and, and um, 
yeah, just as many new poss new things as possible. And that's a very powerful word that you're saying there, possibilities, right? Um, uh, th there's a possibility of you being in Japan, you being in Australia. There's also a possibility with you just wearing a blue shirt or you having short hair. Like possibilities are just variations on, on, on a state of being, right? And so it's, it's our, uh, I shouldn't say mission, but it's, it's our compulsion to sort of actualize those varying possibilities. Uh, so I love what you're saying there, Sam. Val, when, when, if I tell you that, um, if, if somebody came to you and said, well, why should we create another picture or another song or another dance move? Like, what is the point of creating more art or more creation? What is the point of that? What would you tell that person? Would you say to the person, yeah, you're right, there is no point to it? Like, what would you tell somebody who says, do we really need another painting? Do we really need another photo? Of course, we need, we need another painting, another photo, another musical, another movie. Uh, you want a, a different experience. Um, first of all, we get used to everything, and you know when sometimes you have an experience, any kind of experience, and it gives you, uh, it's so intense, it, it's almost like butterflies in your stomach. Well, you know, if you do it more than one time, eventually you don't get the butterflies anymore. So you want another experience, a new one, something that is improved on the old one maybe or totally new so that you get those butterflies and you get something intense again because that's what you want you just want more and you want to feel uh, something different experience something different I think that's what we're here for are you there you're frozen yeah so he's frozen he just sent me a message saying he's frozen um, yeah well yeah so I, I, I really I it's the same as what you were saying Sam it's it's really uh, Experience is really just more experiences, more variety in terms of experience, and maybe and same thing for feelings. It's it's uh, you know more emotion and uh, something different, and maybe even more appreciation. Definitely, once you once you you set yourself up in appreciating. So, Mr. Peter, are you back? I am back, and uh, I didn't hear most of what you said, uh, except that it was super uh, interesting. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> I'm sure it was, uh, and I, I'm sure if I asked you to repeat it, we'd get a variation on what you said. Um, Probably it would be even better, but you know, we wouldn't. I wouldn't want to spoil it. So. <laughs> well, look. Um, now I have no idea where to go. I, I, okay, so I'm gonna let Sam take over the show now because she's a. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm putting her on the spot for no reason here. Um, well, the thing is, I was listening to Val, and then I get a message where Peter's saying frozen. I can't see anybody, and so I. I'm sorry, Val. I, I didn't hear everything. Oh I no. Okay, you want me to do a little summary? I was just <laughs> saying that <laughs> we need we need more experiences because we want to feel something more intense every time. We get used to everything. So if you get butterflies in your stomach one time. Uh, doing something. If you do it again next time, you may not get the butterflies. So you want an experience that will give you the butterflies in your stomach again. So you need something new, something improved, uh, so that you can feel again something different and and uh, and more. So it's always fun to feel more and, and just have more intensity in your life. It doesn't have to be, you know, from zero to sixty in no time. But it, they can still, you know, just improve all the time and and. I get to appreciate it more. That's actually perfect and very insightful. Uh, I'm glad you repeated it because uh, that's exactly it, right? If there's something that lets us know that we are designed, that we are created to uh, compel us for novelty, to compel us for the new thing more, it's that we easily get bored when things are the same, right? We easily get bored or, or, or desensitized to things that are just sort of commonplace. And so we're driven to create variations. Um, uh, and so, so I think that's beautiful. Another example of that is in music, right? We have all kind. look, there are all kinds of pop songs that have the exact same three chords, okay? It goes uh, uh, G, C, D. To me. There's like a billion songs that have the same chords, but it's the variations and the slight variations of the word, uh, of pitch, of, of, of tone that actually make the song um, interesting. You know, even my um, hacking of that beautiful song is, uh, is a variation on the norm. And so it's actually very cool. Um, uh, baby, when you're looking for your job search, when you're looking for your home, when you're planting things, whatever, whatever it is, there's variety in your experience, right? Do, do you appreciate the variety that happens in your experience? The, the, the um, yes, I do. Uh, sorry, Peter, you're frozen again. I don't know if everyone can still hear me. Yes. Should yes. I keep talking? Yep, okay. keep going. 
<laughs> okay. So yeah, on a job, what I do is very repetitive. Like I'm repeating the same thing over and over. Although there are a little difference, like uh, like each time there is a different kind of problem, but the similar problem pops up. But we have similar solution, but never exactly the same. And uh, constantly, I feel bored. Like I feel my work was boring or what I've been doing in my life was boring and there was one time I was actually thinking there must be something wrong with me because I feel bored so much. I don't know if everybody else also feel bored but from what I can see some people they stay on the same job for more than 10 years and I really like that. I like the fact that you can stay on a job for 10 years as comfort but uh, I never got opportunity to do that. Um, but what I learned from my past is that uh, if I have different experience, they actually build me up faster. I get improved, advanced faster. So that's what I learned and um, now I don't feel so bad about getting bored anymore because I know that it's like part of life. Probably like Peter said, that's how we're created. I it's beautiful, not variations, but the speed at which we create variations is increasing, right? It's increasing exponentially. And if you get into the vein of trying new things and creating variety in your life, will you enjoy your life more? You're going to want to do more things, right? You're going to want to try um, more things. In a, a previous episode we had um, Luke who showed us a painting that he did, a Bob Ross painting that I thought it was really cool, right? Just trying new things is really important and you get better and better better at it. There's nothing wrong of course with staying at a job or doing something uh, the same for, an, uh, for a long period of time but if you want to add spice to your life, right, really add variety to your situation. Um, Luke, I'll give you the last word here because uh, we're running out of time. Has, has, has there been any... Um, do you find yourself are you uh, easily bored, like uh, Baby was talking about, or do you find it easy to sort of find things to keep your interest, to change up your routine or anything like that? Don't forget you're muted, Luke. Uh, don't forget you're on mute. Okay, there, there I am. Uh, there you are. For my my side of the the thing, there, uh, I don't get bored easily. You know, I I can't get a, a accustomed to the routine that I do and it doesn't bother me too much, you know, and that's... Uh, Good. Sure, sometimes you, you, you need to change, you do things differently, but uh, my, my, my routine day is mostly the same, you know, it's... Uh, well, look, I, 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 I like that you brought, um, I think they're called maracas onto the show, and it added a variety to our show, a dimension to the show that's very pleasant, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm players, um, uh, so I can tell that you're the type of person who doesn't only observe a situation but seeks to sort of engage within it, you know, and I, I see that as really being the true nature of humankind. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to put anyone with... I'm I, sorry, go ahead. I just want to add to that because I, I'm keeping my camera off. Well, maybe I'll try it. Just don't move, Peter. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I just wanted to add that you bringing your instrument, Luke, mm -hmm. encouraged, encouraged me to be like, oh, well, I don't have an instrument. And then I went and I looked and I found, well, I didn't do the hat on purpose, but then the hat popped up. And, yeah. then, and then I had the music. And so because you brought, like, a variety, you brought something, it created, like, this sort of whole dynamic of, like, a fun sort of play atmosphere. And I think that's what... What you're getting at, Peter, is like creation and variety, even mm -hmm. in like the smallest amount, like changes the whole thing. I, I, I think that's absolutely perfect and a, and a perfect place for us to, uh, to end the show. Uh, yeah, one thing I like to do is uh, go to the inspiration of the moment. You know, I, I, I think of something and then uh, I'll do it or things like that, you know, like a, with, with the instrument things, uh, just five minutes before uh, I went on the air there, I thought, oh, that's why I have to get at a, a different uh, instrument, you know, so <laughs> I went in my room, I, I took this, this one, and uh, I had a few more, you know, so in the, in the following weeks, I'll see a, a new one. Yeah. <laughs> that's absolutely right. So uh, whether we're talking about um, accessing possibilities, the variations of possibilities, um, whether we're acknowledging, um, like Val was saying, the...
the compulsion we have, our innate desire to, um, to, to create novelty, whether we're talking about Beatty, where it just makes life more fun, um, or uh, we're talking about Nuka, where it sort of infects, it's contagious, it sort of compels other people to, uh, to create variety. Uh, I think the engine of creation of variation is an axiom, it's, a, it's an obvious truth, and those of us who tap more consistently, we can have an experience that is way more fun. Um, before I let you guys go, um, I have to, we have to do two more things. So just letting you know what's coming up on our calendar real quick because we have some really cool stuff coming up. Sam, would you like to go first? Uh, no. You have a okay, meetup so, tomorrow? So I have a meetup tomorrow. It's, uh, well, it is full. It's called Purpose and a Life Worth Living. This is a repeat one. It's uh, tomorrow at the 6.30 p.m. Uh, you can try your luck at it, but uh, I think it's, it's full well, right now. It's full with one person on the waiting list, and it's like the thing is, a bunch of people can change it tomorrow. You don't know, so if you really want to come, put yourself there. Up on the waiting list, you might as well try. And then on yeah. the twenty fifth of uh, of this month of August, um, I'm doing a workshop, the Shepherd. Uh, that's the six guiding essentials workshop. Um, so we're going to be putting on that, and then on the twenty seventh, like I mentioned, we're going to be having our dinner, hopefully at the Casa. Uh, terrace um, on Prince Arthur downtown. So we're hoping for a nice, beautiful day to do that. That's going to be on a Saturday at 7 p.m. And uh, there's something else that will be appearing on the calendar, a discussion. So just keep an eye on that. You can check that out at meetup.com slash TLOA MTL. What's up? Good. So for me with Self Discovery Montreal, I actually have two awesome events happening on Saturday on Mount Royal. Um, so starting at 12 o'clock, I'm doing Get Silly About Your Life. It's called a laughter play shop where we're going to be uh, doing laughter yoga. It's not yoga poses. It's just about the breath. Um, so we're going to be uh, forcing ourselves to laugh and get silly and have a fun time on the mountain outside. Um, so that's at 12. And then right after, well, like a half an hour in between, there's um, a group discussion called Pursuit of Happiness. So we're going to be discussing all about what is happiness, how do you find it, is it possible. Um, so that's on the mountain as well. So you can check that out at uh, meetup.com slash stuff dash discovery dash Montreal. Or just go uh, to Samantha. And or go to samanthabarley.com and follow the links. There you go. Um, look, uh, just before we do what's for dinner, uh, which I'll be asking you, what did you eat in the last seven days that you enjoyed, I want to let you know that uh, the appreciationist will be going on hiatus for the next two weeks uh, to, for the summer, and so we will be back in September. Um, hopefully, we will have a change uh, for the format of the show, a pretty big change, so we're going to see. Um, part of the show might be uh, done... Um, we're going to be uh, sending out information about that. I'll uh, keep you an eye out on theappreciation.com. If you want to find out more about uh, the upcoming events, actually, I'll say that afterwards. Um, what's for dinner, you guys? What did you eat in the last seven days, or what are you about to eat this evening if you haven't eaten yet that you enjoyed? Uh, I'll say mine first because it isn't healthy at all. It's not good, and I'm sure you guys are going to put me to shame. Um, but I had uh, Domino's pizza that I haven't had in the longest time, and I forgot how good. Uh, bad things can taste. Um, it was so <laughs> delicious. Uh, so uh, I, I really like that. How about you? Uh, I'll go chocolate. I've just really been in the mood for chocolate this week, so I bought myself two chocolate bars, one dark uh, chocolate, one milk chocolate, and I've just been savoring it. Uh, the milk chocolate's all gone now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for some reason, just chocolate and just like simple and delicious and melt in your mouth. And I actually, uh, which I'm going to be trying, um, you remember Heather, well, you guys, you might not know Heather Boyd, but Heather Boyd is somebody who's like very much online. She has heatherboydwire.com. Uh, she posted a meditation about chocolate, eating chocolate. And so it's a guided meditation you listen to, and it guides you to open the wrapper, take out the chocolate, put it in your mouth. So I haven't tried it, but I'm going to do it this week because I'm really into chocolate. So, yeah, super fun. So what, you do it with actual chocolate? Or actual chocolate, yeah. Yeah, oh. actual chocolate. You meditate while eating the chocolate. <laughs> That's really cool. I'll post, you... on, I'll post it on the Appreciationist Facebook page. Good idea. Samantha. Yeah. Next time I see you, I'll bring you a kiss. Well, I'll uh, give you yes. a kiss. <laughs> I want both, though. I want the real one and the <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Luke, have you eaten anything in the last seven days that you Not enjoyed? Not exciting, but uh, last week I, 
I got out of my fridge, you know, a, a frozen dinner, so I opened it up. I, I did look at what it was exactly, then I, I look at it, and I, I read risotto style, barley with chicken. So <laughs> immediately I thought of Samantha. Oh, that's <laughs> so oh. that's my little story for today. I like it. That's a good story. That's a good story. <laughs> Are we? Are you there, Peter? Uh, yeah, Beatty. Um, have you eaten anything in the last seven days you enjoyed? Yeah, ginger. Okay, ginger is I think is now in season because normally they are planted in spring and harvest in fall, and now it's ginger season. Because last weekend I went to an Asian store to buy my grocery, and they have a lot of ginger, and they're like really good price and they look very fresh. It looks so fresh and crispy, look like they were just stuck out of the earth. And also there's a thing happening in my office because people in that office are very overworked. So they had muscle pain, joint pain, and uh, their boss had a solution. Like every day in the office they're doing this ginger tea event. So it's ongoing. Uh, different people take the duty of the week and they prepare ginger, they cut them in slices, small slices and um, put them in hot water, microwave for a couple of minutes and just let that water infuse the ginger. And they're drinking that tea as like a medicine to cure their um, pain, disease and stuff. So now ginger is in season, I hope everybody can enjoy ginger. <laughs> After it's awesome that you're saying that because it was actually this week that I saw one of Heather's posts again. Uh, Heather Boyd, she posted about ginger tea, and I was like, oh, I want to do that. And so this week I made ginger tea like a bunch of times, baby. So it's it's very funny that you're mentioning that, and it was delicious. <laughs> How did you make it? I just yeah, I cut up the ginger and I boil, I simmered it on the um, on the stove, and but then I made it like I made cold ginger tea, and I actually mixed it with green tea at some point, and it was just delicious. Yeah, well, <laughs> so good. That's really cool. Um, uh, that, on, on that note, um, I'm gonna say thank you to everybody. I'm gonna recap the show uh, when you guys leave, but thank you so much. This was a really fun show. I think we learned a lot, and uh, now I you know I feel like having some ginger, so uh, you have to remember that. Take care, everybody. Hershey's kisses, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Luke. Bye, Luke. Bye. Take care. Bye. Well, that's it for our show. If you want to find out about Samantha Barley, you can go to samanthabarley.com. She also has her own meetup, Self Discovery Montreal, so you can check that out on meetup.com. There is the power of emotions.ca, the power of emotions.ca. That's where you're going to find out everything about Valérie Soule. Uh, she had to pop out here. Uh, we kept her here a little too long, but we're really glad with the insightful information that she provided us. Uh, if you want to find out more about our meetups, you can go to meetup.com slash TLOA. MTL, that's TLOA as in the Law of Attraction. MTL is in Montreal. You can find out more about me at peterpaulhartman.com. You can go the website, thelawattraction.ca, and of course, check out all of our previous episodes at thepreciationist.com. Tune in next week for another exciting episode, not next week, two weeks, three weeks from now, for another exciting episode of The Appreciationist. Take care. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Bye, Peter. Bye, Luke.